Beautiful. Good, you okay? Yep. It's okay. There you go. Very oh. good. Very good. First adjustment. <laughs> Real easy. I know. First adjustment. Here we go. Very good. Very good. How do I feel? You okay? Mm -hmm. All right. And there's sand in there, too. All right, let me check. You are correct. Oh my I God. told you. Said neck and shoulders. Yeah, I've been working from home okay. since um, for the last couple of months, and I don't have the best like sitting mm -hmm. arrangement or habits. I kind of like hunch over a lot, and I feel like my neck being down a lot has been like bothering my neck and my back. Um, and I always get knots like here, which I feel like a lot of people do. I got you. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's primarily it, like mm -hmm. my neck, back, and shoulders. Okay. Yeah, look straight forward. I know this the sitting posture creates the more forward your head goes, sort of like a I don't know, like a bowling ball. If you carry a bowling ball in front of you your arms have to do a lot of work, mm -hmm. right? And I'm the guy who says, if we bring the bowling ball back, then the tension will go away, right? Mm -hmm. So posturally, it's, it, this, the, the stress on this lower neck and upper shoulders is from our posture. It's from what we call forward head posture. Your, your ear hole should be over the center of your shoulder, sort of that sort of seam on your shirt. Mm -hmm. That should line up with your ear hole. And for every inch that the head goes forward, essentially the muscles have to double their workload. So your head averages about 10 pounds or so. So 10, 20, 40, 80. Get the idea, yeah, right? So, like <laughs> right, well, right. And so <laughs> it'll be stressed forever and ever. And so you can, you know, you can rub or gua sha or acupuncture or laser. And until you get the ear back over the shoulder, there's really no fix. And, and so most of chiropractic has turned into what I believe to be more therapy, which is great in terms of as a business model you can work on people and then since you're not getting to the source it's a continual my goal is to teach you and give you sort of instructions on not only getting your getting it cleaned out and getting you feeling better but then ed how do i address this postural problem mm -hmm. i have to sit 8 10 12 hours or however long and so it's essentially because we're bending forward we're stretching forward and so we have to do what we call the opposite stretch or a mirror image stretch to make our body retain the upright posture. Uh, it's the over bending forward and then start introducing some back bending. Um, and then you can't really, I can't just make you bend back without getting your body loosened up and adjusted. Otherwise you'll just bend where we typically are overworked in the first place. Mm -hmm. The lower neck and lower back. So how old, how old are you? 31. 31, so it's, you know, you might see evidence. What I, what I typically see is like I say on an MRI, a 31 year old, I see a 45-year-old lower neck. Now, a 45-year-old lower neck is not going to be the end of the world, but it's evidence of accelerated aging, and that's what I don't want to see. And you know, that's where I, you know, sometimes order MRIs to sort of show you guys. Look, this is like like a dentist takes pictures of your teeth mm -hmm. to see evidence of wear. It's not hurting yet. I don't have radiating pain down my arm, but let's not wait till you have radiating pain. It starts off as just tension in the neck, muscle tightness, mm -hmm. shoulder soreness, and then at 41. Yeah, I guess I got weakness in my hand. I got just I got burning in my elbow, and so it's all from our posture. It's from too much time bending forward, and then the aging of the lower neck at a faster rate. By the time you're 50, your lower neck looks like 90, <laughs> and then what do we do now? And it's always better to prevent. So, how do I prevent these problems and be proactive? Is what I like to try to teach you guys. Yeah. And um, you know, so it comes a couple fold. Your middle back should be soft. I'm a Cairo kid like Brendan and you. So it's, oh, yeah, yeah, mine's definitely not that that soft. It's not supposed to be <laughs> That's how mine feels. Hard. Yeah. But Ooh. that's but that's just from if you if you feel my back when I when I bend forward, watch if it, when you're upright it's soft, when you bend forward, see how it just gets uh, tight? Right? That's crazy. That's exactly how mine but, feels. But but watch but watch as I, as I come up, it can relax, right? So the posture is what determines the tightness. Mm -hmm. Right? So mm -hmm. if our body is forward, it has to be tight, otherwise we fall over and hit the ground. <laughs> what I what I like to do is try to assess how how loose the areas that are probably not injured and are usually tight, how loose they are, and that tells me how much overstress is happening in probably the over loose areas. So right how tight one area is tells me how much another area is overworking. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of go through your back and try to loosen up some of these tight areas. Now when you loosen up something that hasn't been moving it's like going to the gym and haven't been to the gym in your whole life, and then you go to the gym and do a big workout, right? You're enthusiastic, and the next day you're like, I can't move. I can't move. <laughs> what in the world? Dr. Ed hurt me. And I go, well, 
you're out of spinal shape. <laughs> your spine's not in shape the way it should be able to move. You know, you had your hand and you never bent your finger joints, and then somebody all of a like for a year, and then all of a sudden you decided to be, ah, it would really hurt to, to bend a joint. But mobility of joints is how they are kept healthy. So when, you when I take a joint that hasn't been moving, you know, and sort of it's, if it's too difficult or too painful, let me know. I'll try to, you know, have you been adjusted before? Or when's the last time you've been adjusted? I've never been adjusted. Never been adjusted. Okay. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try to go easy today a little bit. Uh, but the air, what you're going to hear is the little air bubbles just from the joints, the little clicks. Uh, there's no bones breaking. It's just air leaving a joint. And the purpose of it is that we're trying to make this area loose so that it's actually the first part of your back that begins to bend. So where we hurt is generally where we're moving too much. And so because this area, based on the alignment, all the stress is going here, and then also it's very loose, this area is very stiff, the brassiere also aids in this. Oh yeah, so, definitely helps. <laughs> <laughs> so you're wearing a brace on your middle back a lot all day, or most of the day, and so that, that brace prevents this area from participating. And so when you bend, to get the idea how this bends too much, and this bends too much. Mm -hmm. So I expect that middle back area that probably not like me too much and I'll try to go easy with it. So cool. we're just gonna start on your back. All right, we're gonna take a one deep breath in for me. Breathe in deep and then lay, lay back, I got you. Just try to relax your back now. Now exhale, here we go. Exhale, I got you, here we go. Exhale, right, breathe in deep, it's okay. I know, first adjustment, here we go. <laughs> Head back, exhale, you're doing good, you're doing good, I got you. Beautiful, breathe in deep. You're doing good, I got you. Exhale, let it go. Let it go, I got you, it's okay. It's okay, see that, you're good, you're good. All right, we'll try to check your hips a little bit, so we're gonna lay on your side facing me. Cool. Breathe in deep, exhale, there we go, let it go. Good, you okay? Yep. Other side for me, very good, okay. Breathe in deep, exhale, exhale, I got you. Good. Your neck is designed to work from the top first and then the bottom last. So in order, you wouldn't be able to overstress your lower neck if the upper neck was functioning the way it was designed to function. Um, the top bone here is actually over to the right. Can you feel this bump right here on the right side? Mm -hmm. And then on the left side, I can't really feel it. <laughs> that bump is the wing of the atlas. So the top bone has these really long airplane wings. Can you sort of see that? Mm -hmm. And so on the right side, I can feel this because the whole bone is sort of over to the right. Can you picture that? And so because I can feel this one a lot easier than this one, it's actually because your head is tilted to the left. And when you tilt your head to the left, the bones all move to the right. And I'll show you this in a second here. So your head is straight on your torso right now, but the bone is over to the right. Now watch what happens when I tilt you to the right. Now I can feel your left atlas. Wow, it's really out. Like I, I had to, to about tilt you about 45 degrees to make your atlas. Now your bone is level. Oh, I got it. <laughs> but your head's tilted pretty far to get your atlas level on both sides. This reminds me of when I was a kid and I crashed my bicycle and my handlebars and my tire didn't line up anymore. Mm -hmm. And you had to make your handlebars crooked to make your tire straight. I want the handlebars straight and the tire straight at the same time. Um, it's going to essentially having, what, what does this cause? It causes extra stress on the left lower part of your neck. Essentially, even when you're looking straight forward, your neck is essentially tilted to the left all the time. So the left lower part of your neck is doing 60-40 or 70-30. It's doing extra work down here on the left because you're avoiding this right side. Mm. It's like if you injured your right ankle and then you put more weight on your left ankle. Now the left ankle is going to be the first thing that starts to hurt. But the left ankle is not doing anything wrong. It's just doing everything. Mm -hmm. You follow me? So sometimes pain can be where all the stress is going, but that area isn't diseased. It's just over-functioning. Can you, you right? I would actually argue that this is the problem right here. The right upper part of your neck is where there's stiffness and the bone's not in the right place. And then another, well, Ed, that doesn't bother me. <laughs> I get it because it's not functioning. It's not doing its job. Another area has to over-function because this area isn't lined up. So the goal of the adjustment is to try to loosen this up a little bit. They taught for 100 years that adjustments change posture. And I wish that were what I could tell you. <laughs> I wish I could say that I'm going to, does that make sense, like move that bone over to the left and that's going to permanently fix you. Mm -hmm. it, it's more complicated than that. The first step is loosening 
the joint, and then the second step is molding the spine into that curved position. Um, your neck is supposed to have an arch in it, and the arch, when the arch is in your neck, all the bones are sort of positioned properly. When we lose the arch, that's what allows the bones to sort of drift to the side. That's where and I sat a lot for work, or even before that when I was in school, right, all those years, in our formative years, from 5 till 20, this is <laughs> <Sitting>. why, <laughs> correct, and that's what then puts us in an alignment whereby now certain areas are being overstressed. So I'm going to go real gentle, we're going to try to loosen this bone up here a little bit, I'm going to go real easy, I got you, just let your neck go, and go real baby adjustment, I got you, it's okay, there you go, very oh. good, very good, first adjustment, <laughs> yeah. how'd that feel, you okay? <laughs> yeah, it was good. Okay. I'm going to go real gentle. Same thing on this side. Real easy. I know. First adjustment. Here we go. Very good. Very good. How do I feel? You okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. So we're not trying, to, not trying to move every vertebrae in your spine. That is not my intent or goal, <laughs> and nor do I believe that should be any chiropractor's goal is to see how many pops I can get out of your spine. Um, it's like the game Jenga. We're trying to move certain vertebrae without moving other vertebrae, right? That's what we call an adjustment. Mm -hmm. A manipulation is... Let's see how many pops I can get out of your back, right? And I know it's fun to have all the pops, but it's really not, does that make sense? It's really not the best for people to, the areas that are injured are moving too much. So it's not very beneficial to sit there and push on them more. And it scares me sometimes when I see videos of people with lower back injuries and they're, does that make sense? Pounding on them like, well, the bone's misaligned. Well, maybe it's misaligned because it's hurting, right? Right? I look at it the exact opposite. They say it's misaligned, and that's why it's hurting. I say it's hurting, and that's why it's misaligned. The exact yeah. opposite. <laughs> right? And I'm like, well, which one is it? Well, I, I guess that's why we call it a practice. Right? <laughs> and this is where we can have a debate, and we have discussions, and I present my evidence. I've never found a lot of benefit going in there. And, and think of it maybe like more simply as a sprained ankle. If you have a twisted ankle, does it ever help to sit there and manipulate the ankle more? No. Generally, you tape it up and leave it alone and put ice on it and let it heal, right? Yeah. I don't believe that it's really good to sit there and torque it around and sprain it some more. <laughs> I don't. When you have a cut on your skin, is it ever really beneficial to sit there and right. rub directly on the cut? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I kind of think we just butterfly stitch it and close it and, and kind of just leave it alone, yeah. right? Now, our posture continually puts stress on that cut. So whereby it doesn't heal, right? And so we then we're left to believe that, well, I'm chronically injured. I'm chronically inflamed. I'm chronically in pain. And pain becomes this, or inflammation becomes this demon that we have to resolve, right? We've got anti-inflammatories. Your <laughs> lower neck is inflamed, and you have tight muscles in your traps, and we need muscle relaxants. And I go, no, you just need to fix the posture. <laughs> if you fix the posture, the muscles will relax themselves. Um, the alignment is what's causing the muscular stress, the joint stress, the pain locally. Um, and we don't live in a world where there's a lot of alignment specialists. We live in Therapyville. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me your symptoms, I'll treat your symptoms, have a nice day. And do you see how your neck doesn't like to tilt to the right? Mm -hmm. Feel that right? Well, I'll, I'll show you the left in a second, but and it, it'll feel a little odd. Like, Ed, you spent a lot of time on the right side of my neck and didn't spend much time on the left side of my neck. What's up with that? You don't really need to be rubbed on the left. <laughs> the right is that far out of alignment. There's a lot of resistance tilting her head to the right. Her neck likes to tilt left. You'll see in a second. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's just an effortlessness. Yeah, it feel, it even feels different. It's, a, that, it's an effortlessness to tilt your head left. It's like you it's like you bought a brand new car, zero miles, you're on a flat road, and the car just pulls to the side. <laughs> right? Oh no, that's just all, all new cars have, you know, alignments that pull the car. <laughs> no, the car should track straight. I'm sorry, I won't, I don't agree. Oh, my dad's, <laughs> my dad's car pulls to the side, my mom's car pulls to the side. I don't accept that either. <laughs> I don't accept the idea that it's all just something that's handed down. And you're right, there is, it's a percentage, 5%. There, it's one of the pieces of the puzzle is genetic. I'm not denying that things can run in the family, but... Injuries are, are unique. <laughs> you know, posture is common, right? We all sat from 5 till 20, so that's a commonality. But that doesn't mean that it can't be balanced or addressed at a young age. And my children, I try to teach them good habits from a young age about how to not 
you know, if, if you, if Dr. Bo was your father, <laughs> he'd be picking on you. You understand? Know he would be teaching. My dad was telling me at a young age, keep tilting your head to the right. <laughs> this was my missile hymen. He'd be, stop holding your head to the left. You know, but the first way to the first way to take care of a problem Sorry. is to identify it, right? It's hard to, <laughs> how can you take care of a problem if you don't identify it first as a problem? And so it's pretty obvious, right? Feel that? It's just, mm -hmm. you know, your neck really doesn't like to tilt to the right. And that's what I would worry about is actually left lower neck symptoms. And I'm glad you're here at your age and you've caught this at an early enough stage that we don't have to, you know, wait for that, that critical moment where you know, Ed, I'm getting radiculopathy, I'm getting pain radiating down my arm. Because I have, I have those people, that actually two were just here, you know, before you got here. And, you know, they, have, they came in initially with radiating symptoms. You know, now that's gone, I've resolved it. But it's because they didn't have somebody at 30 or 20 telling them that this alignment was going to cause a problem in the future. Just like tire mechanics, just like orthodontists, they, they, we know that the alignment puts stress on certain teeth or certain parts of your tires. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I'm going too hard, let me know. It's I'm a pretty greedy chiropractor. I <laughs> I I want everything, and you know, I, I, first visit, first adjustment. You're going to have to, you know, Ed, back off. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for a lot, and then you got to sort of no, not, I'm going to give you this much, you know, but I'm going to ask for everything. Okay. All right. I got you. I'm going to go real gentle. We're going to go again. One more time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ready? Here we go. Real gentle on this right side. I got to try and go a little bit deeper. There we go. You okay? Mm -hmm. Very good. Notice that was a little bit quieter. Did you notice that? It wasn't as loud. That movement was the same bone, but it moved at a deeper level. It closed since the bone's so far to the right. The first adjustment moved it like two millimeters left, and that was like one millimeter. Does that make sense? It mm -hmm. moved it just a little bit more to the left. Very good. This is the gua sha, so the combing is just a way to help. You already know this, I'm sure. Just, just a way to speed up the replacement rate. We're just trying to bring blood in here to these tight, trapped areas. And there we go. Right there, yeah. How's that feel after watching it on YouTube? For It honestly feels kind of like I imagined. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't hurt or anything. It's just like sort of bumpy speed bump right yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're doing good. You're doing good. You just want to loosen that up. Kind of untangling hair kind of idea. It just gets tangled right in there. Fibers get tangled. My procedure with this would be to almost only focus on the right for like a couple of visits. That makes sense. The mm -hmm. right needs to catch up. I, if I loosen the left and I loosen the right, the disparity stays the same. Does that make sense? Yeah. The, the, the looser area gets really loose, and then the stiffer area gets a little bit looser, but then the difference is... Yes, the same. I want to almost just loosen the loose... I'm sorry, the stiff area, and almost leave alone the loose area, because <laughs> I don't want to... I want to bring them into balance first, and then we worry about the... Uh, how loose they are. But this is the curve your neck should be in. Very good. I know your neck's probably, where are you putting me? <laughs> this is actually home. It's where your neck belongs. When we were a kid, this is where our neck was. And then when we <clears throat> sat for years in school, we lose this curve. Excellent. A little gentle, a little traction. There we go. There we go. All right. All right, we're going to go face down for me. The left side is a little bit higher and this this is actually a reflection of your left head tilt so as your head tilts left and this rises up on the on the left here the um, this eventually causes like a domino effect you you pinch here and then you pinch the right lower because you're essentially offloading pressure from the right here down to the opposite right lower part of your back it's it's like my eight ball or my <laughs> Yeah, I can look in the future. You know, <laughs> I predict you'll have right lower back pain. You know, it's really, how do you know? Well, your spinal alignment is going to put stress on certain points. There we go. 
Has, have you had any deep tissue work been done before on your Yeah, back? I actually get massages like pretty okay, frequently, cool. but okay. I haven't gotten one in a couple months. Okay, okay. All right, well, let me know if I'm, I'm going to try to ramp up here and, again, just heads up, <laughs> head back off. <laughs> it's too much. I'm going to, I I really don't think about it being a, a muscular massage. I'm trying to get down to the joints, the spinal joints in your spine, and by loosening the joints, See, this is right where the brassiere contacts you, right? And so mm -hmm. these joints have been frozen. And then the joints above have to be overstressed because these joints are on break. <laughs> these, guys, <laughs> these guys are supported and protected. And then other parts of your back have to compensate. And so I, I really look at this area as being the reason for why you have symptoms here. Do you get the idea? Right? The alignment of your neck and then the lack of mobility <clears throat> around the lower neck causes your lower neck to not only do its job but everybody else's job and the symptoms are just an area saying that it's exhausted right the area is just had enough and <laughs> can you can I be put on vacation I'd like a break please <laughs> and um, I look at it and go yeah you're right you've been working all day and all night and Right there, yeah. Oh. So, and do they do gua sha or cupping or anything like that, or no, just just massage? Yeah, just like the basic. Massage. Just a basic massage. Okay, I got you. Okay. All right. It's like a placement test, you know, or like taekwondo. You're trying to assess what belt we have to start off <laughs> out of here. I'm like a yellow belt. Oh, you yellow <laughs> belt. Okay, good. Not a white belt. Okay, it's good. Okay. <laughs> When you see me hanging around an area, it's because I don't like it. <laughs> you keep going back to that same spot, Ed. I'm going to try to keep working on it until I sort of can fatigue it a little bit and feel like it's starting to function and move the way. Feel the, get the idea right there? It is just mm -hmm. rock hard right here. And like what I sort of blame on the brassiere, and I'm not giving any solutions. I'm just telling <laughs> you what the problem is. Same thing right there. Mm -hmm. You have siblings? No, nope, only child. Only child, okay. <laughs> All right. Sometimes I think about them as being sibling injuries, you know. <laughs> uh, getting injured. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I've really ever had any, like, injuries that I can think of. But I did get hit by a car when I was a teenager, which... Uh -huh. Probably didn't help. <laughs> oh, you were hit by a car? Yeah, I was hit by a car, oh, yeah. Usually, usually people say, like, I was in a car and I got a car accident. No, no, I was, the car hit me, Ed. All right, what, do you want to talk about this? Or? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I was just, like, riding my bike. Okay. Um, and this lady, like, I was crossing the street and this lady hit me on the side. Wow. Um, but I, honestly, for someone who got hit by a car, I didn't get injured badly. I got you. Um, it was mostly, like, uh, road rash, like, superficial skin stuff, but... She flew like 20 feet or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just some road crash, Ed. Jeez. I was about to say, no injuries, and you're like, but I got hit by a car. I was like, that counts. It's life altering, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely bigger than what we normally do. <laughs> had a friend that was like, hit by a parked car. I'm like, no, that's not right. Sorry. <laughs> He's like, I was, ri I was riding my rollerblades, and, uh, and then, a, then a parked car ran into me. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> you mean you ran into the car? <laughs> like, He's like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but it, ha it wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> I had one patient, you know, I was driving, and, you know, and then all of a sudden this tree just came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, because that happens. A tree came out of nowhere, huh? Yeah, just just uprooted itself and put itself right in front of me. <laughs> oh, we'll come back to that, but yeah, it just there's so much bang for your buck kind of idea, so much benefit by I'm gonna, my my task is sort of to find the tightest area, and I've that's sort of it right there. That's pretty tight, and you know. 
you're not sore right here tomorrow, I've sort of failed you. <laughs> I haven't done a good job of, of balancing your spine. And that's what I hope to do today is bring this into, you know, increase the mobility from this area. And that should give your upper back and lower neck a vacation a little bit. And hey, I, had my, I don't have as much stress in those areas. Mm -hmm. All right, a little deeper. There we go. Right there. I try to massage that area with a tennis ball sometimes, right. and I feel like I can't ever put enough pressure on it. It is a tough area to get into. It's kind of like a crevice or a valley. You know, it's hard to get a lot of pressure in there. Okay, okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. She's tougher than she let on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a yellow belt. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> She's handling quite a bit of pressure here, so no, I, I, had, I had a new patient the other day. This guy was, oh, 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 what are you doing? I'm just trying to put some gentle pressure on your back with my thumb. <laughs> well, well I, I didn't even dare touch him with my elbow. <laughs> you know, he's like, like lifting off the table. Oh, oh. I'm surprised that's not me, actually. You're doing great. You're doing great. No, I, no, because when you get massages, you like a lot of pressure. That's great. Yeah, that no, sure. it's, that's good. Because that, what that tells me is that you're ready for stretching. You're, if, if, you, if you can handle pressure by my elbow, then you can sort of, sort of start handling pressure through the stretching. And that's, that's really all that my job is to do, is to get you as supple as possible. And then the stretching becomes your barometer. That sort of, you can use that as a, as a gauge to know when you need to be adjusted again. When the stretch, you'll find that, you know, Ed, the day I got adjusted, it wasn't so difficult to stretch. And then a week, two weeks later, it became difficult. And so as you're adjusted more and as you stretch more, that time gets, becomes more and more. You can, it increases the amount of time you can go. But the first thing that has to happen is we have to get this part of your back in and then get that ear over your shoulders. And then we maintain that. People will say, I'm just here for maintenance adjustment. And I go, do you want to maintain this? I don't want to maintain this. I want to correct this. You're here for a corrective adjustment and education on how correction is even done. And then we can talk about how do we maintain the proper alignment. Your neck likes to fold right here, and that's sort of where your neck will age at a faster rate. Get the idea? Where the skin folds is also where the vertebrae like to fold underneath, and so this area doesn't like to bend as much, and so it's protected and, and, and sort of guarded from aging. And then this is where all the stress goes. And so when you're talking to a you know, massage therapist, I would sort of tell them leave this sort of area alone, work my upper neck work my upper back okay if you can and see if they can
Sometimes these stiff areas are so stiff that they make it difficult for blood to get into them. You know, they choke themselves. They've, they, it's such a high pressure region that it's not a priority for blood to get in these areas. And so that's what allows all this soreness to accumulate in here. And that's again all postural. Posturally, it's why the tightness is here. And so the first phase is what I call the demo phase, getting everything loosened up, getting it clean, getting the joints to like each other a little bit more so that we can stretch back, fix the posture. One, two, three, four, happy days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I would say my back's really started bothering me the last couple of months because when I was working like in an office, uh -huh. the computer was more level, so I wasn't looking down as much, but I have it in my lap all the time. Oh, right there, there it is, gee. Feel the difference? I mean, there's not much. <laughs> this one's not so bad, and then yeah. right there, ooh. It's really just the shoulder, it's just this. This is your, you, make, uh, you know a computer with a mouse and everything? Um, or? mostly a trackpad, but. Okay. You know, just the, the, when you're sitting, you want your elbow down by your side. You know, you don't want your arm forward from your, from your body. Mm -hmm. That's gonna really just torment this, <laughs> the forward position of the shoulder. So, you know, kind of elbow at a 90 from your side. That makes sense? Kind of, if the mouse or something's here, you don't want your arm forward. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. sense. If you have it forward, this is there's gonna be no end to the tightness in here. <laughs> if you're doing stuff, or we have to counter stretch. And I have to be here. I have to do stuff like this. Then we have to just make sure at the end of the day we do the, the balancing stretches. Otherwise, this position creates constant tension in here. And you know you can address it by working on it like this. But then we gotta either try to lifestyle changes, work position changes, or you know, uh, or just counter stretching. At this point, I'm like, I might as well just stand up and like... Right. Okay. It's tough. It's <laughs> tough. But your mom's gone before to a chiropractor. Yeah. But probably not like this. <laughs> oh yeah, she said the guy was like blowing the air on her back or whatever. What? Yeah, I, don't yeah, <laughs> I don't know what happened. That's what he said. We're he was physically just... <laughs> that's your adjustment. <laughs> Jeez. I got you. Little breath, little breath. I'm going to push a little bit here. Here we go. There you go. There you go. Good. Uh huh. There you go. Good. Another one. There you go. Good, good, good. Okay. Yeah, doing good. There you go. There you go. Gosh, there's a little bit of a deeper adjustment move that I do. My dad taught me. It's called I call it the bow move, but. <laughs> It's really just a little bit deeper. I'm gonna do it sort of right up here. It'll bring the joints into extension a little bit, and I'm gonna to try to go real gentle and see if I can push these in a little bit more. I'll sort of show it to you. All right, so you're gonna bring your bring your arms up for me. You're gonna put your forehead on your for put your forehead on your forearms. So keep keep that forehead to forearm contact, okay? Okay. All right. I'm gonna go real gentle first. I'm just gonna bring you up. I'm gonna arch and breathe. I got gotcha. you. Exhale. You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. We're just gonna stretch. Breathe in deep. I want to bring when I go down. Breathe in and then exhale. Good. We're just bringing it into extension. Here we go. Breathe in deep. You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Breathe in deep. Exhale. Good. Breathe in deep. Be a little meaner, Ed. I know. I know. Here we go. Good. I got you. I know it's tough. I know it's tough. One more. Good, yes, very good. It moved, feel it move? Mm -hmm. Yep, I felt the pop. <laughs> I know, it brings you into extension a little bit. You okay? Mm -hmm. Hold on to the table. There we go. Okay. All right, breathe in deep, just relax. I got you. Let it go. Exhale, hold on to the table for me. Let it go. All right, yeah, hold on. There we go, a little bit moved. Yeah. Good, very good. Oh yeah, I felt that. Oh yeah. <laughs> sort of like that. And then you're sort of going to press with your elbow back into my elbow. Does that make sense? You're going to press mm -hmm. backwards there a little bit. There you go. Good. And then press back right there. There we go. Good. It's okay. Come have you back on your back for me.
You gotta get your shoulder back a little bit. I just wanna assess this a little bit. There you go. All right, not too tight. When you're stretching, we're gonna try to bring your arms to the side and then eventually like a clock above your head. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And stretching, almost like this is like noon, 11, 10, nine, get the idea like a, and you use both arms at the same time, but we're trying to stretch your shoulders back. And that's what I mean by when you're working at a desk with your shoulders forward, this is the opposite stretch to counter stretch. Otherwise your shoulder retains that forward position. Okay, if the pec gets really tight, that's what pulls the shoulder forward. So you wanna, you know, when you get massages, I don't think this needs, a little bit tighter, actually a little bit more, a couple of ropes on the right side here, but. Are you you're right, Dominant? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This might be, this shoulder probably goes a little bit more forward over here. All right. And then the humerus starts to, to ride on this little front edge of the glenoid fossa right here. And so we age this faster. The bones start to grow. You get the idea right here. Mm -hmm. And it's because we just need to stretch our shoulder back. Crazy story. I went to the Bahamas like <laughs> seven months ago and it was like a crazy day at the beach, like insane. Really the good. waves were crazy. And long story short, I, I have to go to the ENT because I have like a rock in my ear from, I just saw, like noticed like a week ago. There's like a rock and sand yeah, okay. in my right ear from Hold on. the beach. It's crazy. It's like a white pebble. He might look in there and see it. Yeah, he probably you can know, see it. She saw it. She was like, yeah. what's that in your ear? And I had been feeling well, you're like calling it a rock. We don't know if it's a rock. I think it's a rock. It might be. And there's sand in there too. All right, let me check. You are correct. Oh my I God. told you. Actually, I think it's just wax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. This is. Uh, it's just. I don't think it's a rock. This is. There may be little pieces of sand. It's actually not that deep. Um, what you need to do is, you need to get one of those bulb syringes, those little, little, you know, like for almost mm -hmm. like, what do they call them, Carl, like a little bulb syringe, we can almost mm -hmm. turn for a baby. little baby, mm -hmm. and you're going to get in the shower, and you're going to get the hottest water that you can handle, <laughs> sort of the shower temperature water, mm -hmm. and what you do is you take that with some, first you take some soap in your hand, some soap, and you just sort of push it in there, and then you take hot water and just let it hold on that ear, and it's going to, going to go bloop, 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 and then it's going to go bloop, 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 bloop. It's, gonna, it's not going to leave quickly. Mm. When you put water in here, it should go whoosh, whoosh. There should be no, like a drain trying to, to unclog. Mm -hmm. When you take hot water in the, with the, into the bulb syringe, you're going to squirt that into your ear, and it's going to sort of, you're trying to create like a venturi effect where you're going to rinse out mm -hmm. that tube. but. It it's, might be a little bit of sand in there, but it's, I think it's mainly just, and it's not that deep. It's not, I wouldn't use a Q-tip, okay. um, but it's not right up on the eardrum. You got, I can see actually there's spaces, there's actually it's almost like a shadow I can see behind it. So if the tube's like this deep, let's say, you know, and this is how far your finger can go, it's like right here. Okay. And that okay. tympanic membrane's down deeper. It's about like right here, and it's a solid thing, yeah. So it's, it's, it's not, um, when we're adjusting the ear, what we're trying to do is just try to help get some of the lymphatic drainage so the middle ear drains down your neck, which is on the opposite side of that drum. Uh -huh. So there's a tube right here, and then the lymphatics are behind that, but that's, that's the whole purpose of that. But for, So for that, you need heat. It's wax and it'll melt, but you just, and it might take a half hour. You're going to have to take Ooh. hot water, whoosh, you know, it might be 50, 100, <laughs> I'm getting tired, <laughs> and eventually it'll come out. You it won't to, go deeper though. It's not going to move deeper. It's, if anything, it's, it's actually just sort of glued to the wall a little bit. If you, if you actually shoot mm -hmm. on the wall, you might feel it getting dislodged and then just keep. You're not going to hurt anything. Just bolt, little bulb syringe, squirting. They make more professional things, but the bulb syringe, really all you need is take hot water, as hot as you can handle, like the same temperature that you're showering in, and just keep doing it until you can work you're trying to, you're almost trying to squirt around it and then get, push it from behind, mm -hmm. get the idea? So if anything, let me just see, let me take one more peek at it. If I can give you an idea. I got you. So on the front side, yeah, it's actually on the bottom. 
It's it's glued to the top wall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Only me, seriously. But, but, but the, it's hanging from the top wall. So if you were in there with the bulb, you would want to shoot from the bottom. Get the idea? And that'll get some water behind it to then <laughs> push it out. But it, yeah, it's, or you got to go to an ear cleaner. Somebody got to go in there with tools. And uh, it's not needed to me. You don't need somebody putting tools in your ear. Mm-hmm. unless you, if you, All you really need is hot water. And you can rinse it out of there. It might take it's my a, project for the weekend. It'll, take, it'll just take like a half hour, you know, or maybe maybe shorter. But you just, just gotta make sure you get it out afterwards, so it doesn't sit in there behind it. That's mm-hmm. the only mm-hmm. thing. So it does right. You just yeah, you want to. Let me check the other. Let's see if you to fight in here. This is totally clear. Yeah, perfect. So um, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you just you might sleep. You probably sleep on. You sleep on your left side. Yeah, I would say. I don't know, it varies, yeah. but I've been trying to sleep on this side more consciously uh-huh. now, hoping that like gravity or something will kind of like at least move that's what closer. You, that's what you want to do. Okay. What I'm saying is after you do that, after you then just lay on that light, let that on your right side, that way it'll just, any water that's in there will just, over a period of half hour, hour. So after mm-hmm. you do it, turn the TV on and just lay on your right side. You're not going to hurt anything. I wouldn't put apple cider vinegar in there. I wouldn't put peroxide. I wouldn't put, you can, peroxide's a little bit caustic. It'll, you know, it kills bacteria but it you know it does kind of irritate healthy tissue a little bit mm-hmm. but there's a, that's why we put it on wounds because you want to kill everything but it doesn't it's a little caustic we call it so mm-hmm. I wouldn't put anything other than just hot water but a little bit of soap too because it's, it's oil you know mm-hmm. soap and the oil help to grab it so you take you can keep taking soap and you push it in there take the water and it bubbles and it feels weird and you're like no oh, but you just got to keep keep working it Okay. She go back like this, like after she does it. And then after you do it, you, what, what you're waiting for, you'll know when it's clear. It'll, if you put water, you could you could do this to your left ear. You could take hot water, and you, you go like this, mm-hmm. and then you'll feel it just go whoosh right out mm-hmm. instantly. There shouldn't be any bloop 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 bloop. You'll hear it just like slowly trickling through that little opening. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when you feel it identical to your left ear, you know you've made it. And okay. it'll, it'll be clear because the left ear is totally clear. So. Uh, but it's, I mean, if that's, if that's the opening, it's like, <laughs> you understand? <laughs> There's a little slit at the bottom. Wow. But it's just, it's just, <laughs> it's okay. He, so did, random. What did the it's okay. say on the phone? They're like, oh yeah, we can. No, I didn't even call yet, because I was just like, at first I was like trying to get it with a Q-tip, and then I was like, I probably shouldn't do that. I'm probably going to push it back even more. So. It's, yeah, it's not up against... It, it's it's not up on the, sometimes if it's up against the tympanic membrane it's hard it's mm-hmm. much harder to get out of there it's not it's it's a, at least a probably a quarter inch away from or maybe more quarter wow. inch away from the eardrum so you're safe to just use that venturi effect you can get right behind it and push it out and you'll you'll it'll be a piece yeah i was sand. feeling sand like, I mean, on the q-tips ago, and i'm like sand. this is there's definitely like some that sand in my ear <laughs> That is so crazy. I'm wearing earplugs from now on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tilt your head to the right a little bit for me. I got you. There we go. Good. Okay. Not going to go too crazy. Actually, it's already cleared. Yeah, you've already tilt your head to the left for me a little bit. I got you. There we go. Oh, yeah. yeah. I heard that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was a little. Your your right ear is definitely. It probably has a drainage. There we go. It's okay. It probably has a little bit of drainage issue on that side also. That's why the wax sort of builds up more on that ear. Or it's something to do with how you're sleeping. Mm-hmm. Why it, you know, if you sleep more, if you sleep more on your left side, then it doesn't. This <laughs> ear never drains as easily. The oil just builds up more, so you might catch yourself wanting to. So try to stay on the right side, especially after you do that. Okay. And the idea, lay back. I got your bend the knees, arms above your head, and let your head go back. There you go. You okay? Mm-hmm. And this is what I mean. We have to open up the front part of your body. You know, we've never spent a lot of time opening up the front. So after you get after you get massaged wherever you're going, get the idea that the days you get worked on especially, you want to counter stretch. Get the idea to, to take your body to the extreme of what the opposite of what you're used to. Now, if your hands go numb, you're sort of gonna move them to the side. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I know that wall's the way to your right, but you get the idea you'd it's not uncommon for your hands to go numb because of the distance that they, your shoulders need to travel. Okay, so see if you can handle it. If it's too much difficulty in your shoulder, put your hands in your belly. But you're, you're trying to stretch the chest open, open up the front part of your body, compress the back. And then after about one minute, you sort of push with your feet and you roll upwards. There you go. He, 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 good, good, good. Breathe. What I might want to do at home is you put a book behind your head just to make it not as, yeah, diff- just not as difficult. Because time 
is more important than the depth, okay? So if it's too painful and you're only going to do it for five minutes, it's not effective at stretching this. So the goal is to first get to 20 minutes, and I don't even mind if you put... I, don't even, I wouldn't even mind making it two books. You understand? Mm -hmm. I want time. So first get to 20 minutes, then we can start taking the blocks out and making it less intense. But it's around 15 minutes, you'll notice that it gets difficult. You understand that for your back. Mm -hmm. Things will start to stretch. Things become a little bit more difficult. And Ed, I, I want to really get off this thing. And that's when you got to hang in there and try to push through to 20 minutes. And that's when you'll be lengthening those ligaments. Okay. Uh, and so I would, about every minute, you're going to move one inch. So go ahead and move one more inch, or just one inch. There, a little tiny bit. There you go. And never go down to your lower back. So remember the lower back, we want to leave that alone. We're just going to work sort of near that bra area where the stiff area is. Yeah, this is the hardest. One. Yeah, I know. Breathe and, <laughs> and uh, sort of just put your hands to the side a little bit. I know that wall's in the way there, but yeah, it's, it's good. There you go. Let the arm relax there. Get the idea. We're just trying to stretch these shoulders back, open up the front. Okay. And end of the day, the rest of your life, I think of this like a toothbrush. This is a way that you can participate. After you've gotten adjusted and massaged, now you take the body into that extension, and that's what's going to deal with. Now, when, after you stay here for 20 minutes, when you come up, your head's going to be more over your shoulders because you just stretch the front part of your body. And then I know you guys drove down here in the car. Sitting in a car stretches you forward, right? So that, and there are things that we can do in cars to help reduce the amount of stretching that we're doing forward, but we have to counter stretch your body. Um, and that's the only real permanent way to get rid of that tension and, and pain in your upper back and, and, and lower neck is to fix your posture. And uh, any questions, you okay? Yep. Okay, very good. How do you feel? Good. Very good. Yeah, let me look, look straight forward for me. Yeah, 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 just get, head's much more. So you gotta get, you gotta stretch wow. that body back. And so we have to take you to here so that you'll want to be here. You understand? If you, if you spend a lot of time here, when you stand up, your body doesn't come all the way back. And then our body, sort of this becomes the new home, and you'll have stress here forever and ever. And it just gets depressing as a chiropractor. Oh, it's back again, doc. <laughs> Are you doing your stretching? Oh, no, I did it for five minutes. Well, I didn't say five minutes. I said 20, right? Now, it's OK. For the, for the beginner patient, I would say five minutes is excellent, mm -hmm. right? So we're trying to work our way to 20 minutes. We start at five minutes, then as long as you're progressing seven minutes, and then that's, that's sort of my first phase of care is to get the patient to be able to do 20 minutes. And then once you can do 20 minutes, I don't need to see anymore. You're doing your stretches, and then we move to a, a little bit, the, the roller is sort of the first step, and then we move to a more painful version called a dental roll. It's a little bit more pinpoint, a little more painful, the, but this is, this is sort of end game. Mm -hmm. We start with the roller because you can move around. This, you're sort of stuck in one position. Your, your foot, you know, you just do one position for 20 minutes. Wow. The, the roller, you're moving around. You're doing this much material over 20 minutes, and you're moving around trying to move the pressure point. When you get exhausted in one area, you move a little bit. This, you stay in one spot 20 minutes, and, you know, that's usually two months, three months into care is when we start. So for the, for where I would start with you, and you, and you might very quickly blow, you know, just, and I got my head on the ground, it's a piece of cake, my hands don't go numb. <laughs> I'd say the roller just sort of becomes a massage, and then we go right to the dental roll, and that's what's gonna give you a much deeper, longer lasting stretch, okay? Cool, so. All right, very good, very good, thank you. Yeah, thank you.